attendance. Today, there are considerably more. 15,000 strong to witness her final home weekend as the Hawkeyes open the NCAA tournament against Holy Cross, the Patriot League champions, a winner here in the first four Thursday night. Caitlin Clark making that walk of fame one more time as we welcome you to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Iowa City set to be in full throat for their goat as they welcome in the greatest scorer in college basketball history and her Hawkeye teammates. Here's the bracket for Regional 2 in Albany. We start out with Iowa and Holy Cross and then coming up next over on ESPN2, West Virginia and Princeton. The winners are set to meet in the second round on Monday night. Hi everyone and welcome courtside. I'm Beth Mullins along with Stephanie White, Holly Rowe, and of course the Iowa Hawkeyes are here. They made it all the way to the national championship game a year ago and Steph, the road to get back and go to Cleveland starts here today. They've been waiting for this moment and it's been two championship they are ready to go and Hawkeye faithful hoping to get at least two more opportunities to watch their star in Carver Hawkeye Arena yeah we know she can score over 3,000 points in her career but what has set Caitlin Clark apart is the fact that she also has over 1,000 career assists uh, I mean we know about the logo threes and her ability to fill it up but what is most impressive to me is the way she makes her teammates better she sees the floor she scans the defense all she finds her open teammates in transition. Here they collapse. One, two, three, four. You got to try to get it out of her hands, but she is so good at setting up her teammates. And watch this pass right on the money in transition. I think Caitlin Clark's greatest asset is her vision. Well, her range is pretty much anywhere downtown as the billboard shows you as she makes her way onto the floor. Holly Rowe has more. March Madness is the greatest postseason tournament in all of sports. If you're you're not ready to play one day, your season can end in the blink of an eye. And I've been on the losing side of that, and I've also been on the winning side of that. So I think I have good perspective going into my last um, NCAA tournament. Clark for the win! That's what I've loved about our team is we've never doubted one another. We believe we can be right there with the best of them in March, and that's what gets me so excited. She can consistently knock down threes along with Kate Martin. This is a 
dangerous Hawkeye team. She shot 49% last March from downtown. And there's a falter with a rebound. Clark off the bounce, off the window, and a blocking foul called will get Caitlin to the free throw line. Both players able to get up from the collision. Maureen McGarity in her fourth season, back-to-back -back Patriot League titles and back-to-back -back trips to this NCAA tournament after great success at New Hampshire. Coached alongside her dad, Dave McGarity, at Army. She is also from the Brian DeGeorge's coaching tree, the great teams that they had at Marist, where she played 15 years ago. As Clark knocks down the first free throw, second most attempts from the line in the country. Only Juju Watkins at USC gets there more often. It's what great scorers do. They find ways to score inside the paint, outside the paint, at the free throw line. I think that's one of her greatest areas of improvement. Great cross will work it around. Power Cassidy. Here's Janelle Allen off the ball fake, off the bounce, goes to the left hand and scores in the lane and a little too short from Janelle. Okay, okay. okay. Janelle Allen is so good around that free throw line area. She attacks off the bounce. Clark looking for Martin back door, blocked underneath and taken out of there by Allen. Good play by Callie Wright defensively. Maureen McGarity in the press conference yesterday said, hey, we're going we're gonna to shoot our shot. We got nothing to lose coming in here. Hey, she said that this team is so competitive. They hate to lose. They wanted to be in this type of environment. Stokey, no. One and done on that trip. If you follow the women's tournament, you know that a 16 seed has only beaten a one seed once in tournament history in 42 years. Harvard over Stanford. And that's going to be a blocking foul on Stokey, the sophomore out of Cedar Rapids. Not a major size disadvantage for Holy Cross like they might see against a lot of Power 5 teams. This Iowa lineup not big in stature. No, certainly not. It really is a better matchup for Holy Cross being able to play small, but important for Iowa to keep Hannah Stokey on the floor and out of foul trouble. It's a disciplined Holy Cross team. They're not going to force things. Great double on the block, but you see their patience and poise in handling it. Foreman will step outside and knock down the jumper. Good start for Holy Cross. They're faithful on their feet, sitting right behind us here courtside. Clark bumped, no foul. And now contact on Martin's drive and a whistle. Well, you're going to see an aggressive defensive team. This is what Holy Cross does. Lots of ball pressure on Caitlin Clark, Simone Foreman, one of the best defenders on this team. They're going to show hard, try to force Caitlin Clark back from where she came from. And the Holy Cross defense forces the turnover. That's two already. Well, and again, this is an Iowa Hawkeye team that hasn't played in two weeks. And Lisa Bluter told us at, at practice yesterday, shoot around this morning, she wouldn't be surprised that they're a little bit rusty and it takes them some time to get going. Now in her 24th season at Iowa, number one here all time in wins with seven Big Ten championships. They are the overall number two seed in this tournament behind undefeated South Carolina and they are losing early. Allen with a nice spin move in the lane. Here's Clark. Foreman defending the cross, the tie-up, and a held ball. Possession to Holy Cross. And you see the collapse every time Caitlin Clark puts the ball on the floor. There's no space when she has it in her hands, really crowding her space. Terrific individual effort, but watch the collapse. Three, and they come quickly. A 6-0 run right now for Holy Cross. Holding Iowa scoreless for a couple of minutes. The Hawks. 
Buckeyes are the highest scoring team in the country at 93 points per game. Hey, Janelle Allen feeling it right away. Yeah. You know, this is a team that's not wide-eyed right now. They're coming in competing to win. Clark tries the logo three in transition. Crusaders the other way. McCormack. Front rims it. Here comes Clark. Marshall gets a look and hits it. Two triples for Gabby. McCormack steps away. Bothered by Fierbach. And another steal for Holy Cross. Brona off the mark. Offensive rebound and a stick back. And Holy Cross making the hustle plays right now. That's Lindsey Berger off the bench. And that's what it's going to take. It's going to be a possession ball game. And Iowa, one of the highest scoring teams, the highest scoring team in the country. Defensively, Holy Cross doing a great job. Already forced three Caitlin Clark turnovers. Foul on the drive. Berger thought she got a clean block. And a couple free throws coming up for the Hawkeyes. Mass substitutions for the Crusaders. And for Iowa, Addie O'Grady will come on the floor. Of course, when you talk about the Final Four team from a year ago, they graduated Monica Sinano and McKenna Warnock. But Lisa Bluter was quick to point out this morning at shoot-around that O'Grady and Stokey and Goodman and a falter, the front line, they've about equaled the numbers of those guys from last year. Yeah, they really have. And, and they might be a little bit more athletic. The way that Hannah Stokey can play, you can spread the floor, play some five outs. She can attack off the bounce. She's a terrific offensive rebounder. I think their pace scarily enough, is even better. Yeah. <laughs> they may not be the singular talent that Sonano was, but collectively they've been getting the job done. They've also got a couple of quick fouls now picked up on Lindsey Berger, number 35 in purple. And Brona Power Cassidy will knock down the three. That's the first for Holy Cross today. Uh, great pass. O'Grady missed the layup. Month tied up. That's going to be Iowa basketball. Holy Cross, the 16 seed with the one point lead so far in Iowa City. The NCAA Women's Championship on ABC is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? I want to be a national champion, and that's our goal. I want to be, just be free in March. I want to play. I want to have fun. Well, let's see how they are fueling their run. Brought to you by Wendy's for Caitlin Clark and the Hawkeyes. Well, she's approaching a new single-season scoring record in Division I. She's also in hot pursuit of the season assist record, only four shy now of 300, and she already has set a new single season record with 173 triples. Uh, about half of those from logo range. For Caitlin Clark, who has two points here in the early going, her family looking on. No, no panic just yet. Down one here early in the first. It's early. <laughs> it's early in the ball game, and, and certainly any time you, you're playing an Iowa Hawkeye team, it's about how long can you sustain matching their offensive effort. More turnovers than baskets so far for Iowa. The Holy Cross D has shown up early. Nice backdoor cut and a foul. It's now a pilgrimage site here, Holly. The clock mark on the floor. That's right. You said logo threes. Well, I've got one for you here. This is the spot that Caitlin Clark set the all-time scoring record for Division I women's basketball. But so many teams come in here for shoot-around and practices, and they want to take a shot from that sticker. It actually wore the sticker out. They've had to put a new one on the floor. And I was talking to Coach Maureen McGarty before uh, the game today. She said, yeah, we took one, too. We all want to see if we can make those shots. Even the men's teams that come in here to play Iowa men's games have been trying their hand at the Caitlin Clark mark. It's great to watch, too, all 
the other three teams that are here came in most are, are chucking, yep. not shooting, like Caitlin shoots from that spot. She makes it look easy. Really cool, too, for Lisa Bader to talk about how even the guys that come in to play against the Iowa men try and hit the, uh, try their luck from the Clark mark. For Caitlin with 3,771 points coming in to this NCAA tournament. Last year, in route to the national championship game, she scored 32 per night. Only Cheryl Sweeps had a better tournament run. Back in 1993 for Texas Tech as Kate Martin hits the shot. And Clark gets set to check back in. This is an Iowa Hawkeye team that averaged over 11 threes a ball game. Finding them in transition is critical. Yeah, those 11 threes, the most in the country. O'Grady from Marshall. Oh, they look a little different coming out of that timeout. Well, you knew it was just going to be a matter of time. You know, some rust, not playing for two weeks, playing at home, understanding the implications of where they are and what this journey is about to be about. Just got to settle in. Dragon. Howard Cassidy, Allen's calling for it. A double team awaits. Here comes Martin to help. Forced a tough shot. Oh, Grady running the floor. Rim to rim. 7 0 run. Timeout. So dangerous in transition. Addie O'Grady running the floor. Gabby Marshall, that pass is on the money, too. Gives her an easy deuce. Janelle Allen of Holy Cross is off to a great start. She's got four points early, two rebounds, and she has been phenomenal on defense. She has got a really fun connection here in Iowa City because her brother, Brian, is actually a defensive end for the Iowa Hawkeyes team. She uh, already hit it too small on the floor, but I know Brian is a defensive end. He is not too small, and he's here cheering sister on. He just came straight from Iowa football practice, and he hurried to change out of his Iowa hoodie into that Holy Cross shirt. He did stuff up on the Iowa pants, though, and I said, are you torn at all? And he said, not even 100% for Holy Cross in this moment, and he is just proud to be here supporting his sister. Yeah, uh, great story out of uh, Lake in the Hills, Illinois. Janelle was all Patriot League tournament member. She averaged 10 points, four rebounds, three assists, and route to the title. Crusaders at 21 and 12. Maureen McGarrity has them back in the NCAA tournament for the second year in a row after about a 12-year drought. McCormack, Holy Cross has opened up one of six from beyond the arc. Short on the shot, and Allen, oh boy, they call her for a foul on the rebound. And Kate Martin with the inside position, just the little extension of that left arm is where they got her, and I believe that's Janelle Allen's second foul. That is number two on Allen. So she and Berger now with two apiece. Martin hits the free throw. Six for seven now for the Hawkeyes. Holy Cross has not attempted a free throw yet. It's not a team that gets to the free throw line often. Put a lot of pressure on themselves in the quarter court. They don't turn you over. They don't get easy looks a lot in transition. Put a lot of pressure on themselves to, to execute and knock down shots. Ten unanswered points now for Iowa. A critical moment early on for Holy Cross as they've gone cold. Nice cut. Martin may have gotten a piece of that. And the first free throws of the day coming up for Holy Cross. Well, for the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more info, go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90.
NCAA championships. We are on the road to Cleveland in the women's final four, April 5th, and the championship game, April 7th. On ABC this year. We've got another ABC double header coming your way tomorrow. With number one and undefeated South Carolina taking on North Carolina at 1 o'clock, followed by LSU at 3. The defending national champions will take the floor in their second round showdown with Middle Tennessee. And the Tar Heels gave the Gamecocks a game in the fall. They've been decimated by injuries, but certainly have the confidence to play with South Carolina. Man, what a takeaway for the Holy Cross defense. It is a disciplined, scout-heavy defensive team. They are super competitive. Their attention to detail is on point. They forced five turnovers already. Stokey bothered on the shot and then rips it away from Broda, who rips it right back. All alone, Power Cassidy hits the three. This is not a Holy Cross team that's going to go away. It's a competitive bunch. They're used to winning. They understand what it takes to be successful. They wanted to be in this type of environment. Clark, just her second shot attempt of the quarter. 0 for 2 to start out. She averages about 22 shots per game. And route to leading the country in scoring again this year. That one's off the mark, and then Martin could hang on. Well, this is terrific defense. Brona Power Cassidy stays straight up. She's able to keep a hand on the ball. And then in transition, there's nobody near. She can knock it down to a clip of 40% from the three-point line. Putting the power in the Power Cassidy on that one. Final minute of this first quarter. She'll try for a back-to-back -back and yeah. get it. I mean, they're, they're just really good in their execution. They don't get rushed. They get to next actions. They make the right read and the right play. Pass up good shots for great shots. Clark checks the shot clock. Foreman staying right with her. Off the spin, the help comes and won! defense for shots like this, right? Terrific individual effort, staying glued to Caitlin Clark. The collapse comes, and she just makes a heck of a shot. Completes the three-point play, and she will come out for the final 22 seconds. And some frustration as she goes over to the bench. I think she wanted to stay in and play the full 40 minutes. It's, it's a long game. <laughs> Scramble for the loose ball. Shot clock is off here for Holy Cross to hold for one, but they're scrambling right now. Iowa applying some pressure. Power Cassidy gets it up and gets it in. They don't care about no 16 seed. Holy Cross within two at the end of the first quarter in Iowa City. The NCAA women presented by Capital One will continue after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. What a start for Brona Power Cassidy in this first quarter. Well, she's been terrific. Four threes. She's been getting space. She's been stepping up to the moment. She's been knocking them down. This is exactly what Holy Cross needed to continue to build off of their momentum from Thursday. She is four of six, so that's why Holy Cross is within two as we check out Get More, brought to you by Geico. After their win over UT Martin in the first four on Thursday, a huge victory for them when they hit 12 triples, led by Kara McCormack with a career-high 23 points on seven triples. And uh, Holly's with Brona's sister. Well, Sirsa is one of the biggest fans. She's the reason that Brona is actually playing basketball. She came over to the United States and played at UMass and Lowell. And she said, everything my sister's doing now, I'm so proud that I could be the one that set a good example for her, how to come to the state, set up a bank account, get a cell phone, 
the States. And she's been rocking that Irish flag, that same poster, for four years. It's a little worse for wear, but she's very proud of the four threes her sisters hit here early. And does she take credit for her shooting as well? Hey. <laughs> There's Kate Martin. Corner three for Iowa. Eight points early on for Kate. Caitlin Clark, by the way, in that first quarter. One for three, five points, but also five turnovers. See if Iowa can take a little better care of the ball as Allen is called for the walk. Well, early in this ball game, Caitlin Clark may be pressing just a little bit. You know, certainly understanding the moment, understanding the urgency. Holy Cross doing a good job of showing bodies, of staying in, not giving her space. Just stay patient. Two-time National Player of the Year and immediately takes that one to the rim. Denied. Well, and the more the rest of the Hawkeyes get involved, the more it's going to open up for yeah. Caitlin Clark as the game progresses. Well, often as a point guard, you find a couple of nice passes yes. and starts to relax you a little bit in terms of your shooting. Yes, and, and you have other players who are going to knock down shots from the three-point line. And now you can't collapse quite as yeah. much, right? Up to the top to the face, perhaps. The officials, the officials going to look at this replay. Let's see. Oh, that's on the rip through on the cut by Power Cassidy. With the Previous foul was under review. Yeah, and it looks like she was just going to cut. It doesn't look like there's any intent right there, but definitely comes through right across the face of Caitlin Clark. Oh, that response is uh, from the replay on the Jumbotron. Let's bring in our rules analyst. Something new this year for our NCAA tournament, the Women's Basketball Hall of Famer, Lisa Mattingly. Lisa, what are they looking at right here? Well, we apologize. We're having some audio issues. Kevin Peffel, Natasha Harris, Ryan Durham are officials. There's another look. Definitely contact to the face. After review. The foul on, on Holy Cross number 13 is upgraded to an intentional foul. Any player from Iowa can shoot two shots. It'll be Iowa's ball opposite the table. All right, so the intentional foul called on Power Cassidy. It's her first, by the way. She, the personal foul upgraded to the intentional. So free throws in possession here for Iowa. Uh, it appeared to be a basketball. Yeah. Or, it appeared that she was just trying to, to cut through the lane and do a little swim move, but you know, certainly you know, see the sportsmanship right there yep. coming across the face. Caitlin Clark gets another opportunity at the foul line. You may have heard anybody could take the free throws, but no surprise, uh, <laughs> Clark will be the one to step up. 85% for her career. Starting on a path that they hope will lead them back to the Final Four to play for another national championship. The road for Caitlin last year included a pair of 40-point games, including the first ever 40-point postseason triple-double that she scored on Louisville, and then followed that up at the Final Four against South Carolina. Well, now, due to the uh, upgrade to the intentional, they will also inbound it. Simone Foreman will come on. She has drawn the assignment so far of bothering Clark and doing a pretty good job of it defensively. Yeah, she is. You're going to get the, the steady dose of, of Foreman and Flanagan, the two quickest defenders. 
able to close the gap, able to recover. You know, Caitlin Clark is so good at creating space. You just want to get into her body like that and try to make it as difficult as possible. You're not going to see a lot different defensively. Holy Cross is, what, about 98% man-to-man, I think? Yeah, yeah, over the course of the season. And they're really good at scout defense. So yeah. certainly, you know, they, their game plan for, for Iowa is to force the skip and make them consistently knock down threes. The Hawkeyes have been able to do that. McCormack is one that has to get going after seven triples Thursday night. She does not have one yet today. And a held ball going to go the other way with Iowa. And McCormack so far 0 for 5. She is scoreless here in the first half. And Holy Cross is certainly going to need McCormack to get going. And she's really good at slicing through the defense, at creating for others as well. But you've got to have all five players who are on the floor being scoring options when you're playing a team like Iowa. Martin. Lost the balance and is called for the walk. May have hit. The back of her head, was it on the ground or on a knee? An athletic trainer and uh, coach Lisa Bluter both hustle out there to check on the fifth year senior who is playing in her 158th career game here at Iowa today. She hit back of her head on the floor after losing her footing there. And Kate Martin is as tough as they come. So she certainly got up quickly and wanted to walk herself to the bench. Working inside. Power Cassidy missed the layup, but then gets the strip. They have been hustling for extra possessions, and I like those looks. Power Cassidy's been knocking it down from the three-point line. You've got Gabby Marshall on you. Take her in. Look for the post up. Five on the shot clock. And Iowa gets the takeaway. They're going to have numbers here if they push. Marshall, open. Transition three won't go. The tip and a foul. Whistled before the shot after a falter was able to tip it to herself. Sydney Falter is another one of those players, and it started in that opening game against Virginia Tech, right? That she had, I think, 15 rebounds in that ball game. She is a player who is tough as nails, who rebounds the basketball, gets all the loose balls. That's Stolke. Throwing it off an opponent out of bounds. Marshall on the inbounds. Well executed by Iowa, and they're up by 10. I love how Gabby Marshall is hunting shots. In order for Iowa to do what they want and compete for a national championship, Gabby Marshall and Kate Martin have got to be aggressive shot seekers from the three-point line. Allen faces up, knocked away, and a foul. And free throws coming. Marshall, three for four from downtown. I mean, perfect execution. It's just the screen, the screener. Great job by Hannah Stokey to clean it up. Gives Gabby Marshall the space that she needs. And that is the second person of foul on Stokey. So she departs not even halfway through this second quarter. And that's an area of growth for Hannah Stokey. We've seen her grow throughout the course of the season. But she's a player who needs to be on the floor consistently for the Hawkeyes. Holly? You guys, I'm just watching the athletic trainers talk with Kate Martin. She does keep touching the back of her head. Got a pretty hard hit there. But she just leaned in and told them, I'm fine. She's going to go back and sit and ready to come back into this game. Thank you, Holly. O'Grady is fouled inside. Basketball 
Championship second round continues. And it comes your way on CBS, TBS, and TNT. For more information on tournament game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. The second foul on Brona Power Cassidy now for Holy Cross as the free throws are adding up now for Iowa. They ha actually have more free throws made than field goals, even with O'Grady missing two there. Ten for 13 on the afternoon. Calling for a screen. Find some space and a foul called on Caitlin Clark. It has not, not been the start that she was hoping for so far. One of six. Certainly not individually, but you look at what the collective group has been able to do for Iowa early in this ballgame, and that's what's going to take them to where they want to go. She is five for five at the free throw line here in the first half. Power Cassidy chips away at that deficit. McCormack re-enters. And each time Holy Cross gets an opportunity at the foul line, the substitution is coming. It allows them to set their defense, communicate what they want, execution on that defensive end. Gearbach, O'Grady, offensive rebound. Gearbach drives. Denied by Holy Cross on the run. Ball fake, Allen, O'Grady up. And they're going to call the foul on Addy. This is a great run by Jamel Allen. She had to gather herself. And Addison O'Grady over the top. I think Holy Cross can look to exploit that matchup a little bit in the quarter court. Get the ball to Jamel Allen at that high post. Allow her to try to attack Addie O'Grady off the bounce. Allen just a 69% free throw shooter. And one for four today. Missed opportunity there for Holy Cross. Martin back to Clark and a foul. And free throws number six and seven of this first half coming up for Caitlin. A great job of moving without the ball. And you see already, because of the three-point shooting for the Hawkeyes, now the space was created to allow that cut offensively. And that is now the third foul on Janelle Allen. She'll have to come out. Nope, they're going to wait. That's just a great read by some seniors that have been playing together. 130 starts over the last four years for Clark, Marshall, and Martin. Oh, the Hawkeyes are so good at off-the-ball action. They're cutting, they're splits, they reads, they're back doors. Both sides now likely to play the rest of this first half without a key cog along their front line. Power Cassidy tried to muscle it up and in, couldn't get the roll. And Iowa doing a really good job defensively of keeping this Crusaders team out of rhythm. And spin it around to the other side of the floor. A falter for three.
I mean, this is an Iowa Hawkeye team that moves the ball as well as anyone in the country. Pass up good shots. Get great shots. Sydney and Falter. Three in the corner. And then in transition, Addie O'Grady, a 7-0 Hawkeye run. Tough is even when she's struggling from the field, she can facilitate, she can get to the free throw line. She's done that so far. Sure, we'll see more of that now. See you at the half. Thank you, ladies. I think Holly Rowe has a report for us from that last timeout. Holly? Yeah, a lot of confidence building in that last timeout for Lisa Bluter. She's reminding her team, we see a great shot there from Rona, that they've got to pass and cut. This is a feisty, aggressive, physical Holy Cross defense, and if they pass and cut, they can get better open looks. She also pointed out a couple of their players that are in foul trouble, including Brona, who's at the free throw line now, and Berger, 35. She wants her team going right at them, putting more fouls on them here in the first half. And she's right. The, the, the pressure on the ball, in the passing lanes, the level of physicality, you've got to use quickness and cutting to get around them. Now, they are very good in their rotations as well, so looking for the sprays yeah. and the drop passes in the second action is going to be key. Shout-out, too, to the Holy Cross defense. The Iowa defense has been solid here in this second quarter. That last bucket was the first of this quarter for Holy Cross. And looking for two in a row. Weak side, Foreman has the rebound. That three won't go. In the studio, they were talking about the free-throw line, the trips for Clark. She hasn't been shooting it from the floor well, but her teammates have. They're at 50%. So there's plenty of help for Clay Caitlin here in the first half. And, and that's what it's going to take. And for Caitlin Clark to continue to trust them, to trust that the game is going to open up for her. And there she breathes a sigh of relief. And what was not an easy shot. No. <laughs> that was right in front of us. That was a leaner to the left. Leaner to the left is her specialty. Mm. here for Holy Cross to linger, to hang close through the first half. Clark tracks down the rebound. The push. Sidestep for Taylor McKay for three. Clark with her sixth assist here in the first half. The way that she scans the floor, she had Fearbach on the pass ahead, but knew she could draw another defender to get McKay the open look. Almost came up with the steal there. Martin finds Clark. Here they come again. Well, McCabe hesitated. And then the lob into traffic. Oh, the left side step. Step back. That's the specialty. You probably can't defend it any better than that. The hand in the face. The breath of fresh air. The relief to see it go through the net. Ten assists on their 12 made field goals and living at the free throw line. This will be the 16th free throw attempt of this first half for Iowa. And that's the third foul now on Brona Power Cassidy. 17 points for her here in the first half. Oh, they needed a made free throw to get Brona out of the game, so she will still play on with three personals. She's a senior. She's an upperclassman, understanding that she's got to be smart right here. She's 13 in purple. I'm going to post up inside. Unattended look from three-point range. That won't go from Kahalen. You know, earlier in the ball game, we're talking about the difference in this team with no Monica Sanano. What they just did on the defensive end of the floor, switching one through five. The versatility that they now have defensively. An offensive rebound for Berger there in a foul. One thirty-six to go in the first half. A reminder, 
This is Regional 2 in Albany. It's the upper right-hand corner of your bracket, Iowa and Holy Cross. The winner advances to face the winner of our next game coming up over on ESPN2. West Virginia and Princeton, the Mountaineers, checking out the action. 24 and 7. A lot of folks thought they might have been a little underseeded to be in the 8 9 game in a tough Big 12 conference yeah. against a very good Princeton team. Those two are heavily reliant on their defenses. Martin, back to Martin now into double digits. Got 11. They have totally taken McCormack out of the game here in the first half. Scoreless after 23 on Thursday night. Clark fouled on the drive. Well, Holly mentioned it, moving without the basketball, cutting the back cut on the overplay, the rotation not quick enough. Kate Martin able to finish an easy two. Let's check in with Holly. I was sitting down with Caitlin's dad, Brent, to talk about her as a young athlete. And he said even from the time she was three or four years old playing soccer, playing basketball, she could just see things that other kids couldn't. And you saw that nice bounce pass in between two defenders. She sees things that are going to happen before they materialize. And he said that's one of the reasons she's so great. Well, and as a result, Holly, she is now over 300 assists on the season with seven more today. Well, those are things that you don't teach, and, and those are areas of growth. When you're a player who see things sees things that can develop and your teammates don't quite do it, learning how to communicate that, articulate what you're seeing, that's been the growth of Caitlin Clark throughout her career at Iowa. Some of those early frustrations yep. with some, some players early, now they understand what she's seeing. They understand how to move, and if they're open, she will find them. Martin commits the foul. Clark thought the defender went straight up. Trying to argue her case with the officials. And at the free throw line for Caitlin Flanagan. Iowa defense has held Holy Cross to 26% from the floor and 25% per, uh, from beyond the arc. Final minute of this first half. Clark, offensive foul. That's her second. Thirteen points, five assists, seven rebounds for Caitlin, but six turnovers as well here in the first half. I'm not sure about that one. Mm. It looked a little bit like the Kilmack was late here. sideways. Shot clock is off here for Iowa. Clark ready to go to work. Here comes the screen, gave up her dribble. Ends up with Marshall, short. And that'll do it for the first half at Iowa City. 48 to 30. Hawkeyes over Holy Cross as we get it over to Holly. So you were worried about the long layoff. How long did it take your team to get into this game and how did they allow that? Yeah, it did. It took us, I think, a good quarter to get in like our offense flowing and kind of remembering what we're looking for. I thought we just did some nice things in the second quarter offensively, though. Some nice give and go cuts. Caitlin Clark has had a good game assisting, getting your teammates involved, but I sense a certain level of frustration with her. How do you navigate that? Yeah, I, I wish she wouldn't be frustrated. We love the assist. I mean, we want her to pass the ball. She's one of the best in the country, so let's showcase that today. All right, thank you, Thanks, Holly. Big second quarter, 25-9, to 9, Iowa outscoring Holy Cross to open up this lead. First round coverage of our NCAA Women's Championship here in Iowa City as we send it back to the studio with L. Duncan. Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship.
Championship presented by Capital One. Uh, get your merch while you still can here in Iowa City. Final home weekend for Caitlin Clark as we get set to start this third quarter. 48 to 30, a big second quarter for Iowa to open up the lead. Beth Bowen, Stephanie White, Holly Rowe with you here in Iowa City. Our Capital One rewarding performance. Plenty of three balls and all of them pretty much assisted tonight. Well, this is an Iowa Hawkeye team that moves the basketball as well as anyone in the country. 11 assists on 13 made field goals. And it was the supporting cast getting themselves going early in the ball game. Caitlin Clark has seven of those 11 assists. The defense was all about containing her, and she did a great job of finding her teammates and the Hawkeyes, an outstanding job of knocking down the threes. Eight of 16 in that first half. Let's check out today's game track brought to you by Invesco QQQ for the reigning national player of the year in Iowa. Uh, assisting on 11 of the 13 buckets. Clark with the 13 points and seven assists, but also six turnovers in that first half. Rona Power Cassidy with 17 points to lead the way for Holy Cross. But she will start out this second half already with three fouls. Same for Janelle Allen. So two of their starters have to be very careful. And they'll come out of the locker room with a bucket. And really good action in that right there, especially getting Kara McCormack involved early in this ball game. Now she's a player who was hot for this team coming into the tournament, stayed hot in that first four matchup. Martin off the mark, O'Grady weak side rebound. That basket for McCormack was her first of the game. Clark goes inside, tries to wrap it, ball comes right back to her for a 15 footer. And Caitlin now two for ten today. Allen off the bounce. Drives away from the double team. Holy Cross inspired out of the locker room. Now unable to knock that out of bounds. And Addison O'Grady getting the start in the second half. Hannah Stolke starting this half on, on the bench. Stolke had two fouls in that first half. Martin the and one. Kate Martin is just the, the glue player for this team. I mean, she is tough as nails. Great job creating the contact, finishing with the offhand. But I remember a year ago sitting in this gym and Caitlin Clark talking about begging Kate Martin to come back for another run. The heart and soul of this team, the equalizer, so to speak, from an emotional standpoint. First round action here, Regional 2 in Albany. The winner plays here Monday night against either West Virginia or Princeton. That game is coming up next here in Iowa City over on ESPN2. Cormac misses on the three. Mark pitches it out to a falter. One and down on that trip. Flanagan head up, looking for McCormack. Drops it off for Berger, that's off the mark. Clark rebounds and runs. Off the hesitation. Can't find the bottom of the net. Allen in the paint where she's been having her way. Well, Janelle Allen started the ball game aggressive to the rim, got saddled with those three fouls, and has come out this second half aggressive as well. Clark, and well, that's going to be a reach-in foul on Flanagan. Her second. Flanagan checks out. Foreman returns for Holy Cross. 
Martin on the inbounds. Rebound. Stick back. A falter. Such a good rebounding guard. Just gives them an added dimension from the perimeter. She can play multiple positions. She adds to the versatility that they have on both ends. Plus 10 on the glass. Double digits in second chance points now for Iowa. Martin. Foul before she wraps around the pass. Well, the out-of-bounds play, a terrific read, and you watch Sydney Falter. She comes in from that elbow area and establishes good position on the interior, able to get the putback. Lisa Bluter thought she should have been the sixth player of the year in the Big Ten this season, had a terrific Big Ten tournament. As Marshall is fouled on the drive by McCormack. That will be her second. They've combined for 23 points. And this, this has been a big indicator, Stephanie, in their wins and losses. To me, this is the key. Kate Martin and Gabby Marshall. And, and you look at their numbers, field goal percentage wins versus losses. But to me, it's the three-point field goal percentage wins versus losses because that's the strength of this Iowa Hawkeye team, the way that they can spread the floor, the way they can make you pay as Addison O'Grady gets an easy two. And Gabby Marshall in those losses, specifically one for ten. So for the Iowa Hawkeyes to get back to the final four, to compete for a national championship, Kate Martin and Gabby Marshall have to be three-point shooting makers. And they are five for nine today, so that's better than 30% as Allen connects. Clark, left in the lane, nice drop off for O'Grady. Flirting with a triple-double again. Nine assists now for Caitlin. 13.7 rebounds. Allen, double come. She drops it off for Foreman. Count it. And if that's on Caitlin, that's number three. Well, Janelle Allen single-handedly trying to get this Holy Cross team back in the ball game. The double comes. That's a terrific read. Foreman goes up for the shot. Caitlin Clark gets her across the arm. So the third foul on Clark here, 6.18 to go in the third quarter. Around and down for Foreman. Then they chip away at what was once a 20-point deficit. I mean, this is just a Hawkeye team that has found their rhythm on offense. Lisa Bluter alluded to it to Holly in the halftime interview, finding their rhythm offensively, getting production from all five players on the floor. Number one in the country in scoring, number one in assists, number two in field goal percentage, number one in most threes made. And there's another one for Caitlin Clark, and it's the ninth triple of the day for Iowa. Well, it's going to open up for her here in the second half because everyone else has gotten involved early. It forces the defense to spread out. It opens it up for 22 to go to work. Clark with the steal. As it knocked loose. Working on the smaller defender. Triple teamed inside. And a timeout called by Iowa. for a whistle that does not come. It's Iowa in charge right now. Caitlin Clark and the Hawkeyes trying to work through some issues. A bit of a headache right now. Time for today's Need to Know brought to you by Dick Sporting Goods. And for Caitlin Clark, it's, it's been a frustrating night shooting the basketball she does have 16 points nine assists seven rebounds but also the six turnovers and uh, it, it's been a tussle with the officials throughout Holly Rowe well this is a sign of Caitlin Clark's game that she's actually been working on she is so competitive you know her brother once got a rebound and she
she shoved him in the wall and he had to have staples put in the back of his head. You know, Ooh. she wants to win. She cares about being great. But sometimes it comes out in frustration. Her dad told me this is something they are constantly talking about and working on. Jan Jensen, Lisa Bluter said, let us talk to the official. But she's not shot the ball like this. Her season low percentage is 26%, so this 3 of 12 performance today, this is just a version of her, but she's got to get her way out of it if she wants to be the, the best version of herself. Yeah, unfortunately for the Hawkeyes, her teammates have been picking up the slack. And look, we, we've seen a lot of growth in Caitlin Clark in terms of her leadership, in terms of her I don't want to say harnessing competitiveness because you certainly don't want that. But working on body language, working on communicating with officials, it's, it's still going to continue to be an area of growth as she progresses to the next level. Foreman. Pushes the other way for Holy Cross. But Cormac sidesteps the defender and hits the three. So a couple of buckets here in the third after Ofer in the first half. And in this third quarter, Crusaders have found a little bit of rhythm on the offensive end. They're not going to give up. They're going to continue to chip away, but you got to stay in the space and not let 22 get herself going. Caitlin Clark hits the triple. She's got 19. Howard Cassidy trying to set up inside. Foreman looks for three. job by editor to create some more space for Caitlin Clark. Forty-fourth consecutive game now with over 20 points. That's the best stretch in the last quarter century in D1. Well, you don't want to get caught trying to chuck shot for shot if you're Holy Cross. You want to do what you do best and continue to execute offensively. Marshall, way off. Season, why, why did you decide to come back? Well, first of all, as you can see, she is not only a player, she's a noun. She is the glue yes. of this team, but she kind of laughed at the question and said, why wouldn't I yeah. come back to play with Caitlin <laughs> Clark and play for a natty? They got to the championship game last year, lost to LSU. Their road to the Final Four this year may have to go through the Tigers again if both teams reach the Elite Eight in Albany next weekend. LSU is a part of our doubleheader tomorrow on ABC. Starting at 1 o'clock with South Carolina, North Carolina. And then LSU will take on Middle Tennessee State. The only upset so far in the first round. Yesterday was all chalk. Today, through the first five games, all chalk around the country. As Caitlin Clark will catch her breath over there on the bench. 
Caitlin is an assist and two rebounds away from a triple-double. O'Grady scoring inside. She's one of three other Hawkeyes in double figures today. And not a lot that Janelle Allen can do about that. Addison O'Grady does a great job of getting position. Hawkeyes are going to find her on the interior. This was a two-point game through the first ten minutes. It's been all Iowa since. And another rejection inside. Oh, the defensive effort holding Holy Cross to 32% shooting, 23% from three-point range. Dominating on the glass. And, and Beth, that's one of the areas, you know, you look throughout the, the four years of of Caitlin Clark being here, and even before, Iowa Hawkeyes have always been a really good offensive team. Yeah. But they had been buried at the bottom in every defensive category in the Big Ten. They have continued every year to get better on the defensive end of the floor, positioning themselves to make that run last year by being a better team. And now, if you take it a step further, the versatility they have, the, the, the athleticism and length they have on the defensive end of the floor is as good as it's ever been. And a whistle and a foul. Gonna go against Iowa. That's the fourth on O'Grady. She will come out. Edgar comes back in. A lot of folks have talked about the draw that they got to get back to the Final Four. That it includes the potential of playing the defending national champions. It, it's not an easy road. In fact, only twice in 42 years has a team that lost the national championship game come back the next year to win the title. Tennessee did it in 1996. Louisiana Tech did it in 1988. Certainly a lot more parity around the college basketball landscape now. Marshall, oh, they had her in there. Timing just a little bit off. Another possession, though, for Iowa. Well, the Hawkeyes have just been too much on the glass for the Crusaders. The movement gets you in rotation, opens up offensive rebound opportunities. The size, the physicality, it's starting to wear down. Martin with her 13th rebound, and now a trip back to the line. Iowa 16 of 22 today as Caitlin Clark checks back in. In this final minute of the third quarter, hey, for the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com. Your home for all 90 NCAA championships. And Janelle Allen just picked up her fourth foul. Working inside. Power Cassidy off glass, and that ends about a four-minute drought for Holy Cross. Shot clock is off here for the Hawkeyes. Clark gave it up in a similar situation to end the first half. Here she is again. Off the hesitation. Forced to give it up again. Marshall, step back three. In and out. Holy Cross does not let Clark beat him in that situation. But it is Iowa with the big advantage. Ten minutes to go to advance to the second round. to 50 Iowa with the lead over Holy Cross and now for today's star stories brought to you by Honda Caitlin Clark flirting with the triple double today Kate Martin already double double 15 points and 13 rebounds for the number one seed in regional two 
in Albany. The winner of this one will take on the winner of our next game here in Iowa City. That's West Virginia Princeton in the 8-9 matchup. And they are set to square off the winners on Monday. Sweet 16 for this group will be in Albany. Two sites, of course, in Albany and Portland for the Sweet 16 and Elite Eight with two regionals in each city. Start of the fourth quarter. Hawkeyes coming out in the 2-3 zone. We haven't seen zone from them throughout the course of this ball game. You know, when you're in this situation, you know, certainly understanding that the Crusaders are not a team that's going to just fold, but at the same time, starting to, to work on some things you know you need to work on throughout the course of this tournament to be successful. Clark tries for the deep three. Rebound by Burnley. Trying to pick up the energy. Clark gets the steal. And Caitlin with the land. 23 now for Clark. Over 14,000 strong on hand here at Carver Hawkeye Arena as the anticipation builds towards a likely appearance for Iowa on Monday night in what would be Clark's final dance on her home court. Another steal for Clark. Unopposed for the layup. And we certainly 14,000 plus Hawkeye fans, a community that has been so impacted by this team and this program. And that young lady right there savoring every moment they have with her playing in Carver Hawkeye Arena. You know, she has struggled shooting the basketball, but she's done other things. And, Assisting throughout the course of this ball game and now on the defensive end of the floor getting aggressive in the zone getting in the passing lane and getting herself a couple of easy buckets And then we heard Holly's report earlier about just wanting to enjoy playing some basketball with her best friends and Trying to take a business-like approach and keep the emotion out of it easier said than done When you've been playing with uh, at least a couple of these teammates Starting together for the last four years and on the cusp of uh, playing in front of these incredible fans one last time on Monday night. After a tough first quarter, they've gotten it rolling. Under eight to play here in the fourth. Championship on ABC is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Well, the trophy case, uh, what was it? 15 national honors for Caitlin Clark. She's the national player of the year again this season for ESPN and likely to take home the National Player of the Year awards for just about everybody else. Holly Rowe? Well, you know, they call it the Caitlin Clark effect in Iowa. I'm going to hit you with some numbers. The hottest round one March Madness ticket for women's basketball is here. $340 at Iowa Regional. The next closest, Notre Dame at 80. To put that into context, George Strait, the concert, was $312. So this <laughs> ticket here today, hotter than George Strait. Even Zach Bryan was only 262 But how about this? The men's Final Four versus women's Final Four, the cheapest ticket listed right now for the women's Final Four, $343. The men, two. 33. Wow. There's a famous Iowa movie, If You Build It, He Will Come. If You Build It, They Will Come to watch Caitlin Clark play basketball and all of the great women around the NCAA. We have a lot of stars nationwide who are driving up those prices. Yeah, Taylor Swift has her Swifties. Caitlin Clark has her Clarkies. Around the great state of Iowa and beyond. I mean, sellout crowds everywhere they went around the Big Ten Conference, which is great for viewership and excitement. Hey, I don't know about you, <laughs> but I'm feeling 22, right? Well Come done. On. Well Let's done. Let's go. 
Well done. There's the Swifties, the Clarkies. They come together. But but to your point too, you know, Beth, talking about all, all of the things that this team has has dealt with throughout the course of the season. And, and yes, Tim McGraw is a fan of Caitlin Clark as well. <laughs> that was over in Des Moines this yes, week. Yes, this week certainly. But this is a team who's been under the microscope all season long. You know, whether it's been um, in TV cameras in their faces, publicity, you know, having to have security at the hotels. It's th this, this team has drawn the attention of a nation and they've been dealing with that and handling that throughout the course of this season in addition to just the pressures of wanting to repeat and get to the final four again so so they've been dealing with a lot as, as a lot of other teams have lsu as well certainly but what these young women go through and the way that they're able to stay locked in on and keep the main thing the main thing you know is, is, is really impressive well, as Caitlin has talked about, the legacy will go well beyond any score of a basketball game. But, boy, would a capper with a national championship really elevate the story to an even greater level. And that's what Iowa is trying to focus on through it all. The circus swirling around them. But look at the jump just in the last couple of years. Five more million people watched LSU-Iowa than the final the year before. One by South Carolina over UConn. Well, it's been the perfect storm in a sense of the growth of the game, the way the game is played, how entertaining it is, social media, these athletes allowing themselves to be seen yep. on a personal level by fans across the country that then invest in, in their journeys. Clark now with 27. the run again maybe the last few minutes they'll be out there as the lead continues to balloon but as Holly referenced the star power around the country I mean tomorrow on ABC you're gonna see South Carolina undefeated trying to become the 10th unbeaten team to enter the NCAA tournament and take it all the way to win a national championship and then right after them tomorrow you'll see LSU the defending champs they got a lot going on around them as well with the star yes. power in that lineup they are the second game on abc tomorrow also a double header on espn duke ohio state colorado k-state and uh, keep your eye on this incredible freshman class audie cooks yesterday for iowa state dropped a 40 burger first freshman i believe to do that in the ncaa tournament history 40 and 12. And then Madison Booker at Texas, yep. the player of the year in that league. And the two All-American first-teamers, Hannah Hidalgo at Notre Dame, Juju Watkins at USC. So Booker, 14 assists. But going back to South Carolina, I mean, Dylan Staley has had incredible teams, and she's done outstanding jobs each year with these teams. But this might be her best Not job good. yet. You know, you lose all five starters. You, you come back, and, and you've had the player of the year and a post player for eight straight years and then you've got to retool what you do on the offensive and defensive end of the floor and dare we say could be one of the best teams that she's had in terms of offensive firepower versatility on both ends they left Camila Cardoso back in the lineup too for their next game tomorrow against Carolina as Kate Martin checks out probably for the last time Gabby Marshall also has departed Faces up. She'll try again. Another opportunity. Power Cassidy, no. Madison O'Grady has been terrific for the Hawkeyes. We have not seen Hannah Stokey the entire second half of this ball game. Got, got into some foul got trouble. Got into some foul trouble early. Wasn't very aggressive on the offensive end of the floor. And Ashton O'Grady and A.J. Ettinger have been solid for this team on the interior. Allen 
earns a trip to the free throw line. In arena, this is the best sideshow of the afternoon right here. Her two brothers have been on their feet the entire game, rooting on their sister. And what a moment for these Holy Cross players to be a part of this atmosphere. They win the Patriot League. They win their game in the first four, just the second time in Patriot League history. And they get an opportunity to play in front of 14,000 plus here against Caitlin Clark and company. Yeah, absolutely, and Maureen McGarity was talking about that even before their first four game, about what an opportunity it would be if they could get a win to play in this kind of environment in women's basketball. They come out the first day of practice, they go to the Clark Mark, they take their pictures, they, they <laughs> chuck it up, they get a play in front of a, a sold out crowd and feel this experience. And, and you want nothing more than that for a team that has given their all for you and for their program. Kaylin Clark has checked out of the ball game now for Iowa. 27 points, 10 assists, eight rebounds, three steals the day for her. And some well-deserved rest to get ready for Monday. Falters, they continue to move the ball so well. He's at 19 assists now on 28 buckets. McCormack, got it. Trying to come up with a steal, keeps it alive. Under four minutes to go. They're still running with it. McCormack again. Well, you certainly knew this was a Holy Cross team that's got a lot of pride. They're super competitive. They were going to continue to play until the final buzzer. And it was a tall order to come in here and beat the Hawkeyes in their home arena. Well, they've shown themselves well. Yes, they have. Behind this incredible senior class that started today in their 255th game together. Allen with the basket and a substitution timeout for those four seniors. Wright, Allen, Power, Cassidy, and McCormack. Patriot League champions. And a standing O from the Iowa fans as well. They did have the dog in them, especially in that first quarter when it was a one possession game. They sure did. And we talked to Maureen McGarity about those seniors, and she said they've just been so unique, not in just what they've done on the basketball floor, but the impact they've had in their community, the impact they've had on her and her family. And what an opportunity they've had, and the way they showed out. Certainly a great representation. Sharon Goodman with the bucket. And the Iowa starters with a hand for their teammates. And you can mark your calendars now, folks. Iowa has earned another day of practice tomorrow, and then second round against Princeton or West Virginia. And we can tell you now that will be at 8 o'clock on Monday night on ESPN. Total team effort this afternoon. Martin with a double-double. Clark with 27. Marshall also in double digits. So is O'Grady today. That will be a clash of opposites, by the way, on Monday. Both yes. Princeton and West Virginia pride themselves on their defense. I'm looking forward to that matchup as well. You know, West Virginia is certainly one of the best defensive teams in the country and turning play teams over, getting steals and getting out in transition. And Princeton, heck of a team on the defensive end of the floor, have had remarkable consistency. Can't sleep on the Tigers. No. Remember last year, they knocked out NC State in the first round. They have three NCAA tournament wins already to their credit. They will certainly take a little boost of energy from the Yale men from their big Ivy League upset yesterday. That jump was good from Simone Lewis. 
Going off the Holy Cross bench. And for those who haven't seen Caitlin Chen play, yeah, yeah. for a treat, tune in. You gotta check out Holly Rose Twitter. They're at Sports Siren. Come to watch Caitlin and stay for the other Caitlin. That'll be over on ESPN 2 and a chance for a three-point play here for Iowa. Goodman out of Lime Springs, Iowa. At the line. will pick up their 30th win of the season and their road back to the final four continues. Well, you've got to feel good if you're Lisa Bleeder on a night where Caitlin Clark didn't really have it going in terms of her shooting percentage, but they locked in on the defensive end, especially in that second quarter. Multiple players got involved. It is going to take a complete team effort for this team to get to the promised land that they want to get to in the Final Four to compete for a national championship. And tonight was a good start. And ball, I will keep it. Stick around. Post game, Holly Rowe will talk with Caitlin Clark. Coming up here shortly. Gets it. This will continue the chalk, by the way. All favorites winning so far today, including UConn and Tennessee and Notre Dame. Around the country. And they'll rise to the occasion here in the stands. Crusaders with too much Iowa Hawkeyes. So our second round matchups are now set for you on Monday night. It will be UConn against either Syracuse or Arizona. Six Eastern on ESPN. And we will follow that up with Iowa against West Virginia or Princeton at 8 o'clock on ESPN. 